Yeah, um, if I can I do anything now, it is golf. And so, uh, hello, everybody. Welcome to Tuesday Lunch. I'm Kaylee McCabe, your host and general contractor. Joined, as always, with my co-host and good friend, Scott Sheilar with Sapka. Scott, how are you doing this week? I am doing great, Kaylee, and just uh, enjoying the weather. It's starting to get a little bit cooler here in Atlanta. I think it's uh, only going to get up to 90 today, which is really cool by Atlanta standards. But this morning when I walked out, it was about 70 degrees. So fall is definitely in the air. It is in the air. I'm in Colorado. And in fact, I had to pull out one of my old tools to show you because it fits with the weather. I'm not sure if not many people in Georgia use these or familiar with this. Is it a caliper? Um, what is that? Sort of. It is not a dental tool for a Bigfoot either. Uh, <laughs> this is actually to grab ice blocks. Oh. Um, and so it is a very large uh, way to grab ice blocks, which since Colorado's calling for snow today, I might be using later on this week. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, so, that's why I didn't recognize it. We definitely would not have a need for that here in Georgia. <laughs> No, not at all. And of course, now with modern times, we take so much for granted. It's like being able to get ice uh, and not have to fish it out of a lake. But um, besides the cold weather, I am very warmed and very excited by the interviews that we have today with our guests. Um, we're going to be talking to some guidance counselors. But first, I want to know, how does SEPCO work with school, uh, school counselors in Georgia? Yeah, so, you know, I've been at this for over 20 years now, Kayleen, and so um, it's our approach to counselors has evolved over the years, and I'll tell you, just in full transparency, early on, we didn't spend a lot of time with counselors because our perception was that counselors are telling kids to go get a four-year degree, you know, because that's what a lot of schools do, and and counselors, you know, th that's how that's how they got into their career is by going to get a four-year degree. So our thinking in the early days was that counselors were not necessarily, they were not necessarily our friends and they were not necessarily on our side to be real transparent. But over the last, I would say three to five years, that's changed uh, here in Georgia, at least our perception of it has changed. And we've started engaging counselors pretty, pretty heavily um, at our career expo, for example, that you come out to each year. Uh, we invite counselors to come to that expo and walk the floor and see, you know, see our industry from the inside. And normally we'll have 80 to 100 counselors that come out to that career expo and, and get to interact with industry, industry professionals and learn about the jobs that are out there. So, so that's one way. And then earlier this year, we hired um, a, a counselor from the Department of Education. Uh, her name is Dawn Mann. She was a school counselor. And then she went on to DOE to work with all the counselors around the state. Well, we believe so much in the power of counselors now that we hired one to come onto our team and help us figure out what is our strategy as it relates to counselors. Because, you know, we've got to we've got to engage the kids, but we also have to engage all those what we call influencers. So that's parents, teachers and counselors. They influence student decisions. And so it's important to our organization and our industry that counselors see our industry in a positive light and then help share that you know, message with young people. So, so excited. We're going to have a couple of counselors on today and can't wait to hear what they have to say. I completely agree. And it is a gatekeeper sort of situation. You know, students might come along with an aptitude to build, but counselors are all their folks. Teachers might not even know the career opportunities. And I have to say what happens in Georgia still is fantastic. Your, that show you put on is by far, it's so amazing and really for guidance counselors to get to experience so many different trades at one time, it is eye-opening. So what a gift. And again, I wish it all, I wish statewide, like the United States, <laughs> counselors could come and see that show because it is very, very powerful. SEFCA always does a great job regarding education and informing not just students, but everybody. I like that. It's the influencers. So yeah, we're talking to two of the best influencers today. So Scott, thank you again for joining us. Um, it is always a treat to catch up and say hello. And it's great to hear that Sefka is doing wonderful as well. So um, the, the influence with our, our guidance counselors is absolutely fantastic. And today, Scott, you won't be able to join us at the end, but again, for all of our fans, um, they can stick around and still ask questions. We have our staff standing by to answer any questions that you may have. So Scott, thanks again for joining us. Yes, I Kate. hope you have a terrific non-snowing week. <laughs> it's so good to see you and good luck with the weather out there. I hope you're able to protect your garden and uh, stay safe from the snow. 
<laughs> yes, we'll thank you. We'll, we'll see you next week. Awesome. Thank you so much, Scott. Talk to you later. Bye, Kayleen. Bye-bye. Uh, let's see. Oh, Quita Jones, am I saying that correctly? You are. Oh, good. All right. People mispronounce my name constantly, <laughs> so I want to make sure I get yours right as well. How are you doing today? I'm great. How are you? I'm terrific. I really appreciate you taking the time to join us today because you're actually, you have a very long title. I am going to read this off. Um, you are um, an EDS professional school counselor, LMS PIBS coach, also GSCA region six liaison. And you're at, is it Lounges? How do you pronounce the middle school you're at? It's just Lounge, like one long word, Lounge. Lounge, Lounge Middle yes. School. So I am thrilled yes. because you're one of the early influencers that students get to talk to. You're talking to middle schoolers. So yes. with that, oh, I'm, I, first of all, you're a saint. Middle schoolers are tough. Uh, it's fun watching little people learn sarcasm. Um, <laughs> but what is it. your role? Which is, it is, it's very cute. Um, so what is your role in developing a student's career at that level? Well, at the middle school, you know, we are trying to help kids really understand who they are. Uh, which is most important in helping to figure out your career. And career is like one of our three main domains that we work with the kids on. Academic and social emotional are the other two. So the career development part is where we help kids understand who they are, where they're going, and how they're going to get there. So, you know, the who they are is like your interests and what do you like to do and what are you naturally good at? And then, you know, where you're going, well, you know, are you thinking about straight on to the job, the military, the career, the university, the community college, apprenticeship. So we help them sort of start narrowing down or begin thinking about, let me say, thinking about what their options are and then how they're going to get there is the next part, which is like just what are the steps that we're going to take to maybe get to that career option that you want to do? You know, if you want to be a doctor, are you really good in science? Um, do you really like math? Or if you want to do a truck driver, okay, great. You know, these are the options to take to get there. So we just help open up their horizons and their eyes to the millions of options that they actually have. That is fantastic because for years there was definitely um, a real big push for every student to attend college. Um, and which, you know, higher education is great. I tell students, you never stop learning ever. And if you do, you become ever. boring. So don't stop learning. Yes. <laughs> um, but how do you see the role of the guidance counselor having evolved during that time? Because it's, it's very, very refreshing to hear how you're approaching your students. Well, Kayleen, let me tell you that the word guidance is a no-no. That's like X. So you have to say school oh, counselor. School it's counselor. just school counselor. School counselor. Your guidance is sort Got of it. antiquated, like, like, you know, just like it's evolving. The whole counselor role is evolving. The name has evolved as well. But to That's answer your question, um, yes, it is good to know. And this it's taking a lot of mental change for people to stop saying guidance and just say school counselor because we work with the whole child and that's how the role has evolved we're not just working on getting you to college or getting you to that after high school but you know counselors are elementary all the way up to high school so we work with the entire child from beginning to end inside and out and, you know, our ultimate goal is like we have to collaborate with our community partners and with our CTAE teachers, which is our career technical teachers. Um, we have to continue to learn to help our parents, to help our students, um, to know about all their options, not just the college ones, but every option out there, because every kid is not going to college. Um, it just it's not realistic to think that every kid wants to go to college, honestly. I mean, most kids barely truly want to be required to come to the school that they have to come to. So you just get them to 12th grade and graduating and they're like, you know, okay, give me something that doesn't necessarily require me to have to go back to school. What can I do? So we work with the whole child and um, to try to help them understand just what all their options are. And there are a ton of them out there. 
I love it so much because I don't have any college credits. For a long oh. time, I was actually very embarrassed for people to know that fact. But while I was accepted into college early, because I was taking the SATs and ACTs in middle school, like a weirdo, uh, I didn't <laughs> want to go. I can't sit still. It is not yes. for me. I need to be on the job site. And I'm so happy that you are really kind of thinking about all these different options that, you know, hey, if you don't want to go to school, it doesn't mean you're a dummy and you're not going to be successful. Um, and it's great here because um, following up on the last questions, hiring practice really have shifted to place the high value of skill on the work and the credentials that we're actually doing. So specifically, how are you exposing students to these um, in labor? And it, it, has, it has to be kind of hard with the middle school age group you're working in, right? Or do you? Well, it is, and of- you know, it is, but we try like, you know, career development actually starts before middle school. It starts in elementary. So, you know, the elementary counselors do their basic foundation, learning the terms, um, doing a career fairs, like transportation career fairs, so that the little ones can see, you know, what a little bit of their options are, as well as talking with their parents about those same definitions, those terms, and letting them have teachable moments. And so then they get to middle school. And again, we start working on just exposing them to pretty much anything and everything that we possibly can. Uh, Specifically with us here at Lyons Middle, we take our eighth graders to Wiregrass and they have wired up events. And they're really cool because it's hands-on events that are broken into three areas. So the, my kids get to choose which one of the three they want to go to. If they're interested in the manufacturing, technical, industrial side, they can go to that one. Or if they want to go to the health career areas, they can go to that one. Or if they want to do the business, professional services, cosmetology side of things, they can go to that one. So they go and they get all of this hands-on experience of seeing, A, that the, our technical college is pretty cool and we have all these options for you. And then they get to do those, I like, I don't know, they just get to dive in because the, the students are there, they open up everything, they open up the labs, they open up everything for the students to really get their hands on experience. So we do that. We also have um, virtual career fairs that we're doing since we can't really have people come into our school anymore. And we are face to face here. So we have students here in our building and we have some students that are virtual. So we're trying to merge the two by having virtual career fairs, which we're asking like our families and friends and our parents to uh, do videos of your careers so that we can upload them and let our kids sort of see what you do on a day-to-day basis. And it allows them again to see a variety of everything, everything from the four-year university job all the way down to our welders and our our commercial truck driving parents, because we have a lot of our parents that they drive commercial truck drivers. And then we have a lot of our parents that are in the healthcare field. So we try to expose them as much as we can to that. And then for those areas where we don't have a parent or a community partner that can give us a video, then we'll find some online through SEFGA or we'll find some online through some of our other sites that we can pull videos from and, you know, upload them so that the kids can have something to watch like on a every week to two week basis on um, just letting them see what's out there. I am blown away. First of all, I want to virtually high five you. And when I see you in person in real life, we're going to elbow bump or whatever is cool now, right? <laughs> oh my God. It's amazing. And the fact that you're partnered together with a tech school, but I am not seeing this everywhere across the state. And what is happening in Georgia, again, is like leading the curve and pushing the boundaries forward. And it's wonderful. Both of you ladies are at the leading edge of making this awesome. So I'm so happy you were both able to join this. So thank you so much for taking a moment to hang out and answer these brilliant questions. Um, I'm going to keep you on just for a little while. We'll bring you back at the end um, to have some more uh, question and answer times. But next I am joined by uh, Shamanti Riser. Did I pronounce your name correctly? Yes, you did. Excellent. Oh, excellent. I'm so thrilled that you are joining us because you're with, you're the executive director of high school services with Wiregrass Technical. Assistant director. Oh, my assistant director. Oh, sorry. I'm, I'm going to give you a promotion, right? We'll just make you like <laughs> all of it. That, now it's on Facebook. It's real life. Um, 
I love what you are doing. And it makes me so incredibly happy and energized to hear that a technical college is letting young students in high school come and check it out because I don't know, I've seen for years, if you don't keep that interest up, it really slows down. So thank you for joining us. But since I'm a nerd, would you please tell our fans about Wiregrass uh, Tech, please? Yes, yeah, so we're located in Valdosta, Georgia. We're the only technical college here and we serve 11 counties um, around here with about 20 different high schools. So we actually host a lot of dual enrollment students. Um, we have students at some of our larger high schools like Louts and Valdosta. And then we have a lot of our high school students in some of the rural areas as well. Um, but we have a lot of dual enrollment students here and we're just trying to help them um, get into these, um, what am I, um, high demand fields. And so we have a lot of great programs for those fields. We partner with a lot of industries to get those programs um, out. And we also have come up with new apprenticeships as well so that those students can um, do, do those programs. Um, so we're a great school, the best one in Valdosta. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, what, how many different programs do you have there? Um, we I have over a hundred. I won't say the exact what? number because I don't know right off the top of my head, but we have over a hundred. We have lots. Of programs here. So um, then we have, we just got a mechatronics program where students can get um, an associate's degree in mechatronics. Um, so for anyone who's interested in robotics, um, they can come to us and we'll take That's, care of them. I, okay, this is amazing. A hundred, over a hundred. And I have yeah, no doubt have about several. that. It's, I'm in the industry and I'm aware on how many different career paths there can be all over the place. And so right. you're definitely an example of all of the different career paths. Um, but how is education at Wiregrass changing with the pandemic um, sort of new restrictions happening? Okay, so well, everybody is changing right now. It's, it's, it's a lot of changes. We do have a lot of online programs now. We've moved to a lot of online classes, but we can st we still offer those um, face to face classes for the hands on. The classes are a little limited now um, if they're hands on, but you know it's nothing like the hands on training for programs like welding and construction. Um, you know it's nothing like that. You know because you're a construction girl, so um, we do have those classrooms limited but we still are able to offer some hands-on training for those students. Uh, we just can't have them full because of social distancing, but we are working with students to get those hands-on skills. That is excellent to hear because, you know, you can't teach gravity through a Zoom class. Uh, <laughs> right, right. Um, yeah, so they can do their core online, but, you know, at some point they they have to come to campus so that they can get that hands on training. Yes, it's so important. Um, a quick question from one of our viewers. Is there residential housing uh, on your campus? Not at Wiregrass. We there are okay. several. See, this is a college town. You know, we have three colleges here. Um, oh, so okay. there are several apartments that students can rent, but we don't actually have a residence hall here on our campus. All right, good to know. Maybe I'll come out and build you one. I'm gonna come to school there. I mean it, I say it constantly. If I could handle the humidity, I would live there in a heartbeat. People are so nice, <laughs> the weather's perfect, except for that grossness. Um, so, so with the, how, how does Wiregrass communicate the importance of the skilled trades to students and then aligning their academic program to meet the needs of the workforce? Okay, so we, we actually have career days on our campus that are geared toward high school students. Um, we invite them out. There are seminium um, programs. And then we have another one for our techie programs called Geek Fest. So we have like had a thousand kids here at a time. And what happens at those career fairs are we have our industry partners come out 
and they will actually do demonstrations and they talk to the kids about um, their field. They let them know how much money they can make if they go into this field, um, what kind of training they need. Um, we also partner with all the schools um, and we have a STEM symposium, a, a women in STEM symposium for um, counselors and teachers that um, is free during the summers. Um, of course, we didn't have it this summer because of, you know, COVID and everything. But we have a counselor and CTAE director uh, workshop that we do for the counselors and the CTAE directors um, so that they can come out to our school and see the programs that we offer in person. That way they can kind of let the students know. And then we also visit the high schools and talk to the students. That is incredible and well-rounded outreach for sure, because mm -hmm. uh, I don't know, I've worked with students, uh, sometimes they don't believe it until they see it. They're yeah, they don't, things. they don't, they have to see it. They, they really, with, with programs like this, they do have to see it to buy into it. So once they see it though, they kind of are like amazed with it. You know, I mean, I'm amazed with some of it once I see it, <laughs> um, but they buy into it once they can actually see what we do here. Incredible. Now, does um, Wiregrass offer any sort of apprenticeship programs? Yes, we do. We do. And we just got some new um, apprenticeship programs. We actually have some of our dual enrollment in, um, in some of our apprenticeship programs. One is our um, apprenticeship program that we have with our electrical um, program. And we enrolled our first, I think, six or eight kids last school year. So they're moving along and it, it, it's turned out to be pretty good. So, and we're looking oh, at developing, developing more. Yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. for those students, they, I, I wish I could push more and I'm happy that Wiregrass supports apprenticeships because mm -hmm. that's the best pathway for students to have a long-term successful career it is. is getting that experience. Right. Oh. And then with the um, high school so students, they actually have a chance to make a little bit of money while they're in high school. <laughs> right yes it's so much better than waiting tables Ugh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> gross so gross it is. now what about do you have any online construction programs going on there um we don't necessarily have online we have a few classes in the programs that we can teach online um but you know as we said earlier it's kind of hard to get someone to you know use a saw or something like that we actually have i was just um actually entering some kids in one of our classes at one of our local high schools. We have um, a construction program over there at one of our local high schools and the kids really love it. So it, it's a good program. It is, I'm so happy to hear that. Now, are you seeing more students interested in the industry? Are you seeing an uptick at all? Well, like in certain things, like I guess sometimes kids don't know that like welding and things like that are really a part of construction. And so we, that's like a really popular high school among our dual enrollment programs is like welding and things like that. And we actually offer not only do you have to get like a degree, but you can go ahead and get, you know, one or two certifications while you're in high school and start working. So for those students who are interested in that, they, they do, do love those programs because those are your students who don't necessarily want to go to traditional college after high school. They just kind of want to go to the workforce. So they will, you know, go ahead and do those programs while they're in high school. That is such a heads up for those students. I cannot believe they have that opportunity. Now, <clears throat> do most of your students after they leave Wiregrass, do they right, go right into the industry or are they continuing on their education somewhere else? Some of them do, some of them do. Like I said, those kids that are into those technical programs like welding and construction and if, if they're even cosmetology and culinary if they're really into that they will come here and they'll finish it up or they will go straight to the workforce because you know a lot of times with welding programs like that they may be able to go ahead and find a job with with a certificate and so a lot of times they've earned that certificate while they're in high school and they'll go straight to the workforce because we do offer those technical certificates of credit, which will let them get a job. Wow. Uh, now, some more questions from our fans. Do you offer any sort of, or does Wiregrass offer any sort of financial aid to students? 
to financial aid? Correct, yes. Um, well, yes, we do have financial aid. Um, so just like any other college, we, we're just like any other college when it comes to financial aid. So if they feel that FAFSA out and they say they want to come to Wiregrass, then our financial aid office will take care of them. That is so good to know. Hey, where is that? What's your website? So people watching, they can find out um, where, is, where to find you. Uh, it's www.wiregrass.edu. Excellent. I hope that uh, many of our fans come on over and check out um, both programs because uh, obviously, you know, you, you cover a lot of districts. And, and there's let me a lot say this great. before you go, since you're asking about financial aid. Um, yeah. For a student that's in high school that's dual enrolled in the state of Georgia, I don't know if you know, I know Quita knows, but I don't know if you know, um, the students can take up to 30 credit hours free. All they have to do is fill out a form. Yes, if they're in high school, if they're high school grades um, 10 through 12, they can actually take up to 30 dual enrollment hours free. And a lot of times if you're, you know, you're going to do a technical certificate of credit, you can finish it in 30 hours. You can. I can't believe it. Oh my gosh. I, I'm going to become a lobbyist. I need to make Colorado more like your state. It's wow. What? That's amazing. You're setting up students for such level of success. I'm, I'm envious. And you know, something this is not scripted hey, ladies. If there's anything I can do to help out your students, email me. I will happily zoom chat with any of them and we'll walk around my shop and I'll show them construction stuff because <laughs> You win, oh, awesome. you win, you win for the best. And it is refreshing to hear how professional counselors are positively influencing our students nowadays with showing them multiple pathways to success. And so ladies, I cannot thank you enough for joining us this week. Is there anything else that you would like to let folks know or more information on places if they have any questions? Um, I think that's pretty much it. I mean, just go to our website if they have any inform if they have any questions. And we only we also have a page up about dual enrollment if they're interested in that. Um, they can find out everything on our website. That sounds excellent, ladies. I appreciate you again so much for hanging out and having lunch with us. Or I made gross coffee today. Um, <laughs> Kayleen, let me let me. <laughs> Let me just say, hey, if there's any um, people out there that would like to submit a video for our virtual career cafe, definitely I would love to have a video of what you do on your job. Um, but you can send me an email, um, quitajones at lounds.k12.ga.us, and I'll be glad to send you all the information of what you need to know um, about what to include in your video. I love it so much. I will make sure that we get your email address in our notes so fans after this can also check that out. Ah, you're awesome. Um, Thank and you. I a bunch of them do. Um, so, and, and for folks next week, um, if you, let's see, hang on. If you have any questions, it will be, uh, you could, I'm all over the place. Hang on right now. I'm getting notes from all <laughs> over. I'm going to say a full sentence in a straight way. Okay, if you have any other questions, you can text Career Path to 31996. And then next week, um, I actually have, we're going to be talking with Jennifer Wilkerson from NCCER, which I'm not sure if you ladies are familiar with NCCER's curriculum, um, but it is taught in a lot of different places, but we'll be chatting about that. So Ladies, I hope you have a terrific, wonderful rest of your week. And thank you so much for giving me the time today to chat. Thank you so much. You as well. Sweet. We'll see you all next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs>